Welcome to Words of Aloha with Pastor Izzy Manzo of Amazing Grace Ministries International. We're headquartered in Kailua Kona on the Big Island of Hawaii. Join us now as we get into God's Word. Now, Paul says, just to get this in perspective, all things are lawful, but not all things are profitable for you. And then he goes on, he says, all things are lawful for me, but I will not be mastered by anything. Just because it's lawful doesn't mean I'm going to let it master me. And now he goes on to say, food is for the stomach, the stomach is for food, but God will do away with both of them. Now listen to the next part. Verse 13. Yet the body is not for immorality, but the body is for the Lord, and the Lord is for the body. He says, now God has not only raised the Lord, but he will also raise us up through his power. And verse 15, he says, do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Shall then I take away the member of Christ and make it a member with a prostitute? He said, may it never be. Or do you not know that the one who joins himself to a prostitute is one body with her? For he says, the two shall become, he quotes from Genesis here, by the way, the two shall become what? One flesh. The one who joins himself to the Lord, he says, however, he is one spirit with him. So he says, flee immorality. Every other sin that a man commits is outside the body. But the immoral man, he sins against his body. He says, and he says, or do you not know that your body is a temple for what? The Holy Spirit. You guys know this verse, right? This is one of the most quoted verses from the book of 1 Corinthians. Do you not know that your body, how many of you know this? Your body is made to be a temple for God's spirit. God didn't say, build me a building and I'll put my spirit in the building and you can come to that building and visit me. He said, no, instead, Jesus said, guys, I need to go now. And they were grieved. They're like, what do you mean you're going to leave? And he said, it's to your advantage. I tell you, it's it's to your advantage I leave because I'm going to go away, but I'm going to send you the paraclete, the, the one, the helper, the one that comes alongside and he will be with you and he will lead you and he'll guide you, and he'll teach you, and he'll bring to your remembrance all that I've spoken to you. He says, it's okay, guys. I'm sending the Holy Ghost. And the Holy, see, Jesus, when he came and he humbled himself to the point of becoming a man, he was stuck in one geographic spot at a time. In that shell of a human body, I mean, you talk about a downgrade. You're the son of God, Right? Son of God, see that the right hand of God, and you step into a human form. The very part of creation, what you created in your image, you go, well, I'll go down and become one like those guys. That's a downgrade when you're God. How do, why do I say he was God? Because it says in John chapter 1, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word what? Was God. And he was, he was with him in the beginning, and he was the only begotten, full of grace and truth. We beheld him, it says. And that one that was full of grace and truth, he humbled himself. He humbled himself. He became a man. Now, why did he do that? Because so many of your friends have asked, the, probably you might have even thought the very same thing. If there's really a God, why doesn't he come down here and show himself? Anyone ever thought that before you were a Christian? Or maybe even after? I know I did. Like, look, if you're really there, why don't you show up? (laughs) Let's find out what he says we should do with our bodies. Because he says, don't you know your body's a temple? Right? You're a temple. A temple for the Holy Ghost. And Jesus said, I'm going to send my Holy Spirit. He's going to, I have to leave now, he said. But it's to your advantage. Because the Holy Ghost could come and... And this is the beautiful part about the Spirit of God. God's Spirit can be with each one of us all around the world and not be stuck in one geographic location. You say, well, what's the advantage of that? Think about how many people need to, to have a touch by God in their lives. And they may never get to a building 
or church temple or something to, to seek God. And God says, no problem. I'm just going to send one of my temples to the spot. I can send in, I got these portable temples. They're my, they're my, they're my people that I put my spirit in. And how many of you know God's spirit's with you? You know, when somebody are like, how do I know if I have his spirit? I'm like, have you ever been just about to do something and there's this voice that comes up over the, it, you know, some people say it's not like right over the shoulder, like, uh, 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 don't do that. And you're sure, at least when it happens to me, I know that ain't my voice talking. Because my voice is saying, do it. But how many of you felt this before, that little... That little still small voice, that, that one that you can't even shake, no matter what you do, like, can't you see I'm about to have fun? And the Lord's going, don't do it. That's the Holy Ghost. Because the Bible tells us that God gives his Holy Ghost to convict us con concerning sin. Convict means to point it out. Hey, watch out, that's, that's going to get you in trouble. And conviction is different than condemnation. The devil says, he'll point out your sin too, but he does it in a way to drive you away from God. Conviction draws you back to God. I know they both start with a C, but they have two different sources and they have two different results. Conviction of the Holy Ghost makes me go, yeah, maybe I should pass. Now the devil, he's a skimer. He'll just say, go for it, go for it. And then as soon as you do, then you go, you scum, Nick. How dare you call yourself a Christian? You should not even go to church today. You probably taint the whole club because you, you, know, you messed up. Remember, you were washed. And you were sanctified. And you were justified. And now your body is a temple for the Holy Ghost. And here's the conclusion. Look at the last verse of the chapter. We'll end here today. Paul says, he says, do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost who is in you, whom you have from God, and that it is not your own? What is not your own? Your body. It's not yours anymore. God paid for it. Who's it belong to then? Him. For you have been bought with a price, therefore... Glorify God with your body. Did you know you were bought? How many know you were bought by what Jesus did? He paid for you. He paid for you. You are now his. He says, take this body that you have and glorify God with it. It's been bought by him. It belongs to him. I know, that the, I know this is really hard for some folks to swallow, but if you can receive it, if you can have ears to hear, your body belongs to God now. He paid for you. You belong to him. Use your body this week to glorify God. Not to glorify man, not to glorify yourself, not to glorify something down here. To glorify our maker. That's what you got that body for. Paid for, filled with a, a seal, the Bible says. A seal that is there on you like a mark, a holy mark, that shines to all of the angelic realm and says, this is my property, property of God. God says, I seal you with my Holy Spirit. It's like he put a little stamp on us. Here you go. My property. Paid for, filled with my spirit, belongs to who? To God. You belong to God. Barry is now God's. That's it. End of discussion. Use your body to glorify God. You belong to God, right? How many of you already knew this? This is like probably you're going, gosh, man, the preacher takes a long time to tell us stuff we already knew. <laughs> you know what's so funny is that people know this and they forget. They do. They, they actually forget. It's like almost like they forget that they need to eat good food. You know, if I said, we're going to have a seminar on how to drop, a, you know, two inches off your waist in a week <laughs> and build some muscle at the same time, you feel better by the end of the week. Anybody want to do it? I will teach you how to do it. I have done it numerous times. By the way, I have done it numerous times. 
Do you know how many people are willing to pay me to teach them how to do that? For physical discipline? To improve their physical being? And yet that's just a shadow of the truth of what I'm trying to teach you today. I want to improve your spiritual being. And you know, your spirit will be so improved when you start to realize your body was paid for by Jesus. And it was filled with God's spirit as a seal. Sealed until the day of redemption. You have been sealed. You're protected. Like, it's like force field. <laughs> filled with his spirit. And now, now this is the part we forget though. Now we forget our body belongs to God. Man, if I could get the whole church, I mean, when I say the whole church, I mean every person in every different denomination, non-denomination, the whole body of Christ to hear this message that their bodies belong to God. And they're to glorify who with their body? God. How bright a light will we be in this world? If we could get the whole church, I'm talking every, every single denomination, non every believer in Jesus to recognize your body belongs to him. Use your body to glorify the Lord. How, how bright would we be in this world as a church? Blinding. We what? The problem is we're too busy with our body belonging to us. God, I'll loan it to you on Sunday morning for an hour or two. I hate that, but I'll do it. The rest of the week, it's mine. That's how some Christians live. I'm not going to lie. I know. They forgot their body belongs to God 24-7. You're his. Live like it. I know it's simple to say, but is this really easy to do? No. Do we need to be reminded for those of you who've been in? Everyone's been in Christ over 10 years. Raise your hand. Oh, man. Okay, yeah, that's enough years to have a few years under your belt. Do we need reminder of this? Yeah. Very good. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's your answer. Give God your body this week again. The whole thing. Say, here it is. Here's belongs to you because you're a temple of God's Spirit. And He might send your temple on assignment to somebody who really needs a touch from his spirit. And they're never going to go to a church to get that touch. So God goes, I'll take the church to them. I'll take my spirit to them. And that's why he desires earnestly to put his spirit inside people and not inside buildings. You know that Jesus never did a building program? Never put a thermometer on the wall to raise the money? Never did any of those fundraisers? Why? He was a failure at ministry. Didn't know what he was doing. The son of God, really? I don't think so. I think he knew his temple was his flock. And you are made to be his temple. And you just need to be reminded of that. That's all. You just need a reminder. You're, you're his temple. Go live like it. And don't take his temple and do something with it that doesn't glorify God. Don't take his temple, it says, and join it to a harlot. That'll, that'll cause trouble. Don't take his temple and drag it to the bar to get drunk. It's a temple of God. Don't take his temple and do something shameful with it this week. Take his temple and glorify God with your body, wherever he puts you this week. And let's see how bright we can shine. I think it'll be a fun week. Maybe if I can get everyone here to do this. Anyone willing to do this this week? Glorify God with your body this week. I get everyone here to do it. Maybe we could get like start a, a, a you know spread the spread the word. What what are you guys doing different? We're just trying to glorify God with our bodies. I mean, it belongs to Him, right? We all belong to Him. You start passing the word to all your fellow believers, all your friends that know the Lord. Look, don't forget, we belong to Him. We're his property. We're filled with His Spirit. We got a seal on us. We belong to God. We got to glorify God with our bodies. We can't take these bodies and do stuff with them that doesn't glorify God. But is the church doing stuff with their bodies 
that doesn't glorify the Lord. Yes. It's nothing new. Guess what? They were doing the same thing in Corinth. But that's why it's written for us. The Bible says these things were written for our encouragement. That through the scriptures we might have hope. We have a great hope, guys. Because we have this to remind us. Just a reminder today. Just reminding you. Eat some spiritual food this week. As much as you eat physical food. I might see you guys back really spiritually strong next week. Be like, oh man, I'm feeling good. Spiritually pumped. Fueled up. Like, what'd you do different? I ate spiritual food every day, like the pastor said. Every time, you know, I actually did this as a young believer. I went, well, I eat, at the time I ate, tried to eat three times a day. Now I eat six times a day. It's more challenging. But I thought, if I eat three times a day, I should probably read my Bible three times a day. I've got to feed my spirit somehow. You know, I should listen to a Bible study or something. I've got to do something to feed my spirit as much as I feed my body. I challenge you to try that. Just try it. Just try it. Every time you think of eating some physical food, think, did I feed myself anything spiritual? Go have a little snack on the spirit, you know. <laughs> open up, read a couple verses. Just like you open up the cupboard, nibble on little crunchy M&Ms or whatever it is you pull out. for. Just try it. Every time you feel like eating some physical food this week, I pray the Holy Ghost reminds you of what I'm saying right now. That you need to snack on the things of the Spirit so your spirit could get strong. Get fed. And then we'll come back together next week and see how we're doing. As I submit to you, we do a lot, lot better than going for a whole week without eating. Than showing up to church starved. Which is what a lot of Christians are doing today. They're the once a week eaters. And then they go, man, the pastor really didn't give me much to chew on. I'm like, he put out so much you would choke. <laughs> you ever fed someone who after they've fasted for a week? How much can they eat? Nothing, man. They can take a little sip, a little bite, and that's it. They're done. That's why so many people's spiritual appetite is so small. Because they haven't had the discipline of getting fed. A regular diet. They haven't developed that discipline for their spirit. And then they think it's the problem was the pastor. The buffet was too, you know, I don't know. Couldn't find anything to eat at that church I went there. Let me tell you, the food's set out all the time. Sometimes their appetites are askew because of a bad discipline spiritually. It's a weird thing. It really is. But I pray your ear can hear what I'm saying. Not what I'm saying, but hopefully what God's Spirit is saying to you. May you have ears to hear what the Spirit speaks to you this day. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the beautiful day. Thank you for the dolphins passing by, the living wallpaper that we get to enjoy. Thank you, Lord, for your kindness, that gentle breeze blowing through this place. I pray as we prepare to leave this place, Lord, that that blowing would be accompanied with a breath of your spirit, Lord, that would blow through each of us to refresh us, to strengthen us. Lord, to the ones that are hurting, Lord, we ask that you would lift them from their pain. Those that are hurting in, in the heart, Lord, the brokenhearted, mend their broken hearts today. We pray you do your great doctoring on each of us as we, as we need, Lord, as you see fit. And we thank you that we could be together in this place. Thank you for your kindness. To you we give all the glory, all the honor. May it all be yours. In Jesus, your son's name we say. Amen. Amen. Would you stand with me listening to a closing song and send you off in the joy of the Lord? Mahalo for joining us. If you'd like more information about us, go to our website, AmazingGraceKona.com and click the link to follow us on Facebook. That's AmazingGraceKona.com Mahalo and God bless.